While watching this nonsense, it should be taken into consideration I'm neither a photographer nor videographer, just someone who punches about in art galleries with a camera and a scowl. Because the awful footage in EC videos must be down to equipment inadequacy and not my incompetence, I decided to buy a fast lens for art gallery shooting. The lens also needed to be wide, so after a little research, the Sigma 16mm f1.4 DC DN was chosen. Such a quick lens allows video friendly shutter speed of double the 60 frames per second rates I shoot in art galleries. Well, not quite double. The UK's 50Hz electricity cycle restricts shutter speeds to 100, or the video clips will suffer with flicker. Size and weight of the 16mm were concerns, despite Sigma's advertising copy claiming Developed to feature a lightweight, compact package for everyday use, Sigma DN lenses for mirrorless cameras deliver superior performance covering the key focal lengths. Removing the lens from the box I almost cried. The lens is massive and very heavy, but most worrying is the weight may necessitate use of a neck strap, and real men only use wrist straps. Attaching the lens, I gingerly let the camera hang from my wrist. Hmm, it didn't feel particularly secure, but it should avoid neck strap ignominy. We met at the station each weekday morning, 0800 hours or thereabouts. We lived back to back almost for 13 years, followed each other down Sinclair Drive to college once a week for a year, sometimes me ahead, other times you. Shy glances and nervous stares, gothic before goths, rebels without a song, too cool for school, but we never actually spoke. After the exhaustive wrist strap testing, the King's Cross station train was brought in, from where I headed south along Gray's Inn Road towards Tate Modern. Tate Modern was chosen because it's horrible to shoot in. The light, which is mostly poor, changes in every gallery, behoving one to constantly adjust white balance. Incorrect white balance can be rectified in post, but auto white balance results in wild temperature shifts, which are not pleasant to correct. Ever the professional, the white balance hadn't been changed from the previous gallery in this clip. Testing close autofocus on posters from the protest and photo book exhibition, the lens missed on nearly every shot. But hunting was absent, and I was probably exceeding the lens's focal range. When not operating the lens beyond its scope, autofocus is excellent, as good as the native Sony lenses I possess. Lack of lens stabilisation unfortunately leaves Sony's awful ibis to damp any movement. As a result, walking with the Sigma is not practical, but I found walking footage with Sony stabilised lenses unusable too. A 16mm lens entails close proximity to your subject, but not too close as we've seen earlier. And on several occasions I set off the gallery alarms while reaching over the ropes to frame the shot. The alarms appear to have been installed after Rothko's Black on Maroon was improved by graffiti in 2012. The man 
man has been jailed for two years for defacing a painting by the artist Mark Rothko. At 3.25 yesterday, a visitor defaced one of Rothko's Seagram murals with black paint. It was the work seen here on the right that was targeted. A visitor used black paint and a small brush and scrawled over the corner of a mural by the artist Mark not wanting to be escorted out of Tate Modern for activating the alarms, I selected Sony's much vaunted clear image zoom to get closer to the artworks while remaining behind the rope barriers. The A6500's 1080p footage is soft at the best of times, but applying a 1.7 clear image zoom magnification, it becomes softer than an idiot Team Sky believer. If you favour separation as much as Charlotte favours separation from Tarquin, Sigma provides the means with this lens. Something to be aware of is the chirping cricket sounds emanating from the lens's autofocus motors, preventing employment of the camera's internal microphone. Not a problem for art gallery use though. Lens distortion has nowhere to hide when photographing framed works, but the Sigma has no need for concealment. The raw images it produces are the best I've experienced. Sharpness across the frame is streets ahead of the SEL20 F28 and SELP1650 lenses, illustrated by the text in these art gallery information label photos. One has to say, Sigma deserves all the complimentary reviews this lens garners, and it's near perfect for EC style art gallery videos. The only style you have is bad style, you idiot. My few complaints are size, weight, and lack of stabilization. The Sony A6500 Sigma Combo is a long way from when the only equipment I ponced about in galleries with was an HTC Desire and of course a scowl. Have I mentioned I'm hopelessly in love with Glasgow yet? Thank you.